Today's Leeds news. Vober move sits with Leeds status. Shackleton wants to stay. Another senior executive exits and press conference reaction. Morning folks, Jay here to view on Thursday the 18th of October, 19th of October with your Leeds United news. Hope you're all having a really good week so far. Daniel Farkas' press conference is finished. We will get to that in the back end of the video. We'll start off with some news uh, bits to get through first and then we'll have a quick chat about that. But we'll get through this as quickly as we can. We'll start off with um, news in Germany about Max Vober's status at Leeds and his ability to move on a permanent basis to Munchen Gladbach. Max is one of the few loanees who is having a reasonably good time out on loan. Gladbach not having such a good time, but Vober himself has been called out by Gladbach hierarchy for some serious praise around his battling performances and his leadership. Gladbach are said to be very keen on keeping Vober after his loan move, but that situation, according to Rheinisch Post, sits with Leeds and Leeds' status more importantly. The article points out that Vober's style of play is something that Gladbach lack across their team and that without him, that battling defensive kind of displays aren't there in the team and aren't in the individuals within that team as well. But they say any chance of this move being made permanent pretty much will depend on what Leeds do this season. If Leeds are promoted to the Premier League, Leeds will be in a position to talk about a higher transfer fee for the player. If Leeds don't get promoted to the Premier League, the loan clauses on all these players exist again next season, so they could go back out on loan. Or Leeds could sell for possibly a lesser fee than they bought them for in the first place. That would depend again on the negotiations, Leeds financial power and where we are. And given that if we don't get up, the financial fair play stuff gets tighter again next year so and um, what it has been said about the situation is that the Rhinish Post have said that it's too early to talk about figures and numbers on transfers just yet but that there is a desire there to keep the player the same has been said about Mark Rocket at Bettis Bettis want to keep the player but Bettis apparently have said that the £12 million option to buy that's included in the loan is too much and they feel it's too much and there are conflicting reports going around about how Rock is getting on one report two days ago said he was having an awful time which isn't the case at all. He's having a very good period at, uh, at Betis. So um, lots of options, but the clubs that have the options don't seem to be in a position to afford them, which was similar to what happened with Roma last year. Uh, moving on, let's talk about players who want to stay at Leeds and let's talk about Jamie Shackleton. Uh, Graeme Smith in the Yorkshire the Post has written a piece where he claims that Jamie Shackleton would love nothing more than to stay at Leeds beyond his current contract this season. Shackleton is now 24 years of age and is coming to the end of his current deal, which expires at the end of this season. Uh, Jamie has played pretty well in most positions this year. He's played left-back, right-back, centre-mid, even played in the wide areas and the wing, which are probably his poorer of his games. Was very good at left-back and very good at right-back for Leeds. He has started 6 of 11 games and has pretty much been used as a sub in every other game except for one. And um, Smith goes on to point out that if Leeds did get promoted, and this is the question... Would Leeds look at Jamie Shackleton as a player who would play every week or a player that would be in the squad for match days? Would he play a lot of games? The other question that's been said in this is, Jamie himself is going to want to become an ever-present aside at some point in his career. Whether he feels he can do that at Leeds or will have to move on elsewhere to get that remains to be seen. But um, we've seen players, there is a shelf life on being a you know a utility player or, or a substitute coming off the bench with teams there is a point where you'll want to become a player that plays every single week and starts games so Jamie will have to keep an eye on that situation but he's been very good for Leeds this, so far this season I know there's a couple of people who don't like the player but he's been very good and consistent when he has played I always say he does very little wrong when he does play Jamie so you know there's that uh, moving on let's talk about exits and we'll talk about another executive that's left Leeds United this week and Leeds have confirmed the, the club's commercial chief Paul Bell has left the club and has decided to step away, away Bell has been an executive director at Leeds for seven years and been involved in the club for nine years in total. Bell was originally appointed to his role by former Leeds owner Massimo Cellino. Um, he was taken from his time at Sheffield Wednesday, but that was his second stint at Leeds. He had been at Leeds before and he was appointed in 2009 by Sean Harvey to look after Leeds' director of commercial interests there as well. And um, Bell follows shortly after other exits from a boardroom and executive perspective after Massimo Marinelli and Sandro Mancucci left Leeds last week. This follows all of the, the team that made up um, Andrea Radrozani, not Mass Much, you know. Andrea Radrozani's backroom team are now all gone and away from the club, and we'll start to see the uh, restructure continues, I should say, behind the scenes for Leeds, and we'll see what happens with the um, any news on the new technical 
scouting roles and all the other scouting roles that are advertised. We haven't heard who's been appointed to those roles just yet, but we'll keep an eye on that. Um, right, that's going to be it for the news pretty much today. We are going to take a quick thing and then <laughs> see on the far side of this for the press conference reaction. See you in a second. So we did say there the press conference with Daniel Farka has finished and some interesting things to point out. A lot of non-questions asked today. It was a real, it's been away for two weeks and there's nothing to talk about kind of press conference. So um, I, some of the questions, we're just we're not going to cover them. We'll skim over them. They were just fluff, so we won't talk about them. But we will start with the injuries. Um, and Daniel's given us a rundown of where Leeds are with the current injury situations. Willie Nyonto is back in team training since last Sunday and has been involved in a couple of sessions. He said um, he is in contention for the weekend and has looked very active and very busy in training. Jamie Shackleton also back in team training since Monday. And he said he's also in contention for the squad for the trip to Norwich as well. Uh, Junior Firpo is back in training, um, but he is only back in part. He's not back in full team training yet. He's still training on his own. It would be a couple of more weeks before he's back in. Sorry, he, he is in team training since Tuesday, sorry. But they've only had one session. So they said it's probably too soon for him. So he will probably sit out this weekend. Stuart Dallas, same situation with him. He has been part integrated back into team training. So he's doing bits on his own, a lot of recovery stuff on his own. So he said at the moment there is, with some of the injured players, there is a need to be involved with the team at some point but then also to do a lot of recovery on their own as well because they've been out for so long so that's something to keep an eye on uh, asked about the situation with Jed Spence as well he said he's on course with his rehab he said he is back on the pitch training but is very much training on his own at the moment and he said but um, they're hoping to get him back into team training next week and um, but he would be another few weeks before he's ready to play uh, moving on to international players that came back, he was asked about players came back and they all in good situations. And he said, yeah, they've all come back without injuries except for one. There's one small minor knock to Leo Hjelda that needs assessing. But they said it's nothing serious, they're just keeping an eye on it. They all came back today pretty much, he said. We would have thought they would have come back here in the week when their when their break's finished. But um, he said they've only actually had one, well, will only have one session tomorrow or today as a team before they go out to Norwich. So... The international breaks just aren't great for clubs, are they? They really mess around with them. You get one team training session before a game. It's nuts. It's nuts. Uh, he was also asked, what does he actually get to achieve during an international break? You know, with so many players going away, he gets a very small group to work with. And I think the answer was pretty obvious. He said, um, first of all, we work on the individuals. We work on individual situations that we don't get a chance to work on when you're playing the game Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday. So he said um, there's a lot of individual work. They do a lot of stuff on finishing scenarios and finishing in general. Again, so they don't get to work when they're playing games in such short spells. Um, and integrating players back into training that have been out injured for a while and getting them up to speed as quick as they can with when they can spend more time with them in the smaller group. So that gets done as well. And he said... Um, we can't do any team training, which is a problem because we just don't have the numbers, he said. So it's it's all focused on smaller stuff and finishing stuff, and that's what they work on. So, um, Asked about his return to Norwich this weekend and how he's feeling about the situation. He said that he hasn't talked much about it at all. He's been too busy. I love this man. Um, he, he said it's uh, been a while since he was there, um, but he said some players are still there, but they play very differently now than when he was there. There are some new players there that he's not aware of, but he said he, um, he has to make sure that Leeds are prepared to play Norwich and to understand what Norwich's strengths are with the ball and without the ball and understand how they play with and without the ball as well. So uh, pointing out a few um, Paul Heckenbottoms there as well, but um, interesting to see that he uh, pretty much dodged that question, but we wouldn't expect anything else from him. It was a pretty professional answer. Asked about three managers being sacked this week and how he feels about managing in general. And he said, if you're not prepared for that, don't sign the contract. He said that um, you have to be ready for the short term and the long term. You've got a plan for both. You don't always have the next game. Three points don't aren't always guaranteed. But he said, um, you don't wake up in this job. You've obviously had to work to get to this job. And you might have been at clubs where there's less pressure. But then the further your career goes and the higher up you go, the more pressure comes with these jobs the quick and the quicker it comes as well. And you've got to be able to deal with that. And if you can't deal with that, don't sign the contract in the first place. So, again, very direct answer. Um, ask, could he watch football and enjoy it? These are the kind of questions that were asked today. Just, again, as I said, there's nothing else to talk about. So, he said, no, he doesn't. Um, doesn't have much time to watch football. He spends so much time watching football for work that he barely gets a chance to watch it for, for enjoyment as well. Um, but he said he does like to watch international games and try and enjoy them when he can. But in general, he said he has to watch so much football for work that very little of it is for fun. It's more for tactics. Um, Archie Gray's situation was the one that gave the longest answer and the most detailed answer. Um, and it's an interesting one. Basically, he was asked, was he okay with the fact that Archie Gray played every minute of England in the 19th three games? So three ninety minutes back to back. And he said, look, it's important to get the right balance and it's important and it's a big deal for these people to represent their countries. 
but he said he, he doesn't blame managers. They have to play their best team. When you look at that age group, Archie is one of the best players in that team, so he understands that he plays. He said he understands why that he's picked but he said if we want to judge it then we have to ask what's more important is it about winning titles or about the development of the player it's a conversation we should have we should talk about this he said if it's about winning titles then Archie should play but he said if it's not about winning titles and it's about development then you spend your time developing them you manage their minutes and you look after their recovery as well you don't put so much pressure on them in such a small amount of time he went on to say that as far as he is concerned Players like Archie playing in front of a packed Elland Road or going away to aggressive away grounds, that develops the player's personality and his character. That improves him as a footballer. But he questioned whether playing underage football develops Archie as a, as a player at all, playing at that level with very small crowds. And he said as far as he's concerned, he doesn't believe that playing at that, at that kind of youth level actually develops Archie any better as a player. He thinks that playing in front of you know, big crowds and big stadiums will develop the player far better than there. Um, but again, he said it, it's a conversation that needs to be had about this level, about what's what's the point of this? Are we trying to develop players? Are we trying to win underage titles? Which switch? He would rather players were developed at underage and getting ready to go and play in the first team for England where they can go and win things for the first team where it really matters. So um, that will divide opinion, I'm sure. There's some people who are involved in youth development will see something different. But there is a point about did Archie Gray really need to play in all three 90 minutes back to back and did he really need to play in all three of them there's a question they'd be asked mm-hmm. uh, and then just lastly um, asked about the team being in really good form talking about the wingers and situation in particular talking about Jaden Anthony or Daniel James like how does he come to a decision on either of those two uh, and he said he doesn't want to compare his players he said we've got very good options in lots of positions and he doesn't want to compare he said um Comparing two players to playing the same position is no, it's the same. Jorginho Rutter and Pat Bamford as a number nine play very differently. The wingers play all play all play very differently to each other as well. So he said it's it's very different. And he said um, you've got to look at their strengths and weaknesses. All players have strengths and all players have weaknesses. You just got to look at what they are, look at what the opposition you're playing against, and pick the best team that you can pick to get the best from that. He said each game needs to be judged independently, and I agree with him on that as well. Um, but yeah, he said he doesn't talk doesn't want to talk about strengths and weaknesses too much because he doesn't want to talk about negativity. He wants to keep a positive vibe in the dressing room and everything is, is grand right now. Uh, and that was pretty much it, folks. That was it. There was a lot of other small questions. What's your favourite shade of blue? You know, tea or coffee? <laughs> it was that kind of day. I'm not, I'm not even joking. But it was that kind of a day. There just isn't anything to talk about. So everyone's trying to fill their time. So, um, yeah, it's an interesting one. We've... Um, get ready for this now tomorrow we'll have a preview for the podcast as well and we'll get ready to um see what Leeds can do going into the weekend's game against Norwich could be a couple of big weeks ahead of Leeds could Leeds close the gap on Leicester or see extend but a um, big few games for Leeds and we'll see if we get on that's it I'm waffling here so I'm going to stop have a great day and I'll talk to you tomorrow for more Leeds news see you then bye